So people are coming to your website and maybe they're signing up for your email list. Hopefully they're even buying your stuff. That is awesome. You're actually accomplishing your goals. But if you don't track them, how do you know what's actually working for you? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up goals in Google Analytics. That way, you'll know exactly what's working. So let's go. Hey there, Leslie Samuel here, the business coach for content creators. I post videos to help you thrive as an online business owner. So if you're a content creator who wants to have an impact while building a solid and fun business, hit that subscribe button and gently caress that bell icon so that you can be lovingly notified whenever I have new content for you. Okay, so you want to track goals in Google Analytics. Great, I'm gonna show you how. But before I do, this video covers one part of the series on how to track the ROI, the return on investment of social media. Basically, it's time to stop guessing about what's working and to know down to the dollar amount how much your post is worth. If you haven't checked out the other videos in the series, check out the links in the description below. For now, let's talk about setting up goals in Google Analytics. Let me show you how this looks when it's done well. All right, so this shows a whole lot of stuff. It's from when I used to have a membership site called My Coaching Club. Now, this doesn't exist anymore, but I went back to September of last year so that I can show you how it worked when I was selling a digital product from my site. There were different ways that people could join my membership site. They could sign up to get my free opt-in to get my blog content calendar spreadsheet. Uh, but also for this month, I did a webinar uh, that you can see down here, and I have all of these things set up as individual goals. And you can see exactly how many times those goals were met. Uh, there were a total of 83 goal completions with a dollar value of $3,891. Over here, you can see we had 40 content calendar spreadsheet signups. And down here, you can see 17 people signed up for the coaching club. And here you can see that there were 25 webinar registrations. This is why Google Analytics is so awesome. You can track just about anything, but it doesn't do this by default. It gives you the power to determine what to track. So what I wanna do now is show you how to set up goals in the simplest way possible. Now in the second video of this series, the one right before this one, I had you determine which specific metrics you're going to track uh, that are gonna tell you whether or not you're accomplishing your ultimate goal for your business. If you haven't gone through that activity as yet, I highly recommend that you go back to that video right after watching this one. In fact, this is an entire series that's available right here on my YouTube channel on how to track the ROI of social media. So I'm gonna link to all of those in the description below. I also link to the worksheet and spreadsheet that I use in this series to help simplify the entire process. And you can sign up for it 100% free of charge by clicking on the link in the description below. So let's take one of those metrics to use in setting up this process. It can be anything from newsletter signups or the sale of a specific product. Uh, and in order for this to work, you're gonna need to have your pages set up in a certain way. There's one main page that we need to pay attention to, and that's what we're gonna call the goal page. Now let me explain how this works. Let's stick with the example that I've been using throughout this series. Let's say you're trying to help busy moms create healthy meals for their growing families, and you have a meal plan for sale. When someone goes through the process of purchasing that meal plan, there's a goal page. It's the page they reach right after the sale was successful. If they reach that page, you know you made a sale. What I want you to do is grab the URL of that page because that's what you're gonna need to set up this process. Now, before I show you how to set this up, uh, if you are using an e-commerce platform like WooCommerce, Shopify, or any other service that allows you to sell a bunch of products, there's actually a better way of doing this and it's called e-commerce tracking in Google Analytics. If you have that set up, Google Analytics will track all of the purchases so that you don't have to do uh, set up these goals individually. But I still want you to watch this entire video because it's gonna give you a better understanding of how this entire process of goal tracking works in Google Analytics. So watch the rest of this video and then in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to set up e-commerce tracking. All right, let me show you how I set this up. And to show you how I set this up, I'll use an example from 
the product that I used to sell, which was my coaching club membership. Just so you know, this product isn't available anymore as I now focus on one-on-one -on -one coaching, but showing you this is gonna give you a good example of how it works. When someone signed up for my coaching club, after the payment was successful, they'd go to this page. This is my getting started page. This is my goal page. If they reach that page after going through the checkout process, the goal was reached and I want Google Analytics to track that. This right here is the goal page and the URL that's right here slash get started is what I want to grab. And I'll grab that when the time is right. Let's hop over to Google Analytics right now. Okay, so I'm in Google Analytics and I'm gonna come down here to admin. And then in the view section, this third section over here, I'm gonna click on goals. Once there, I'll click on new goal. And I'm gonna scroll down here because the kind of goal that I want to create is a custom goal. So I'm gonna choose custom and then I'm gonna click on continue. The next thing I have to do is to give the goal a name. I'm gonna be simple here. I'm gonna call it coaching club sign up. Then I'm gonna come down here and set the type. Now there are different types to choose from. The one that I want to set up is a destination goal, but you can also set goals for a few other things like spending a certain amount of time on a site or visiting a specific number of pages uh, or some other custom events like watching a, a video or something of that sort. Now these are a bit beyond the scope of this video, but I wanted you to be aware of what they are. For now, let's just click on continue. Now we have to give the goal details. This is where you're gonna put that goal page, the goal URL that we spoke about earlier. As you can see here, uh, you can select three kinds of destinations. You can select equals to, begins with, or regular expression. Now, the simplest of the three is equals to. When you have a simple URL, for example, yourdomain.com slash thank you, you can use equals to. If the URL doesn't change regardless of how people get to it, just use equals to. It's gonna be simple and you'll be good to go. Now, if they're buying your product and when they reach the thank you page, uh, it's something like yourdomain.com slash thank you question mark product ID equals 35M or some other fancy code at the end, what you're gonna use is begins with. Then you could say the URL begins with, for example, thank you. Let's select here, begins with, and it's gonna track regardless of what comes after that, thank you. And lastly, for the most complicated setup, if you have a situation where, uh, like the last one where some kind of fancy code gets added at the end, and in addition to that, it's across multiple subdomains, uh, you're gonna need to use a regular expression. Now, if you heard that and you thought, wait a minute, Leslie, are you speaking another language? Don't worry about this. You probably won't have to use it. I just mentioned that for the geeks out there like me uh, that know what I meant. If that's not you, don't worry you'll probably never need to use it. For now, let's keep it simple and go with equals to. Uh, then I'll come over here and grab the URL, not the whole thing, just the part after the dot com, and I'm gonna copy it, and then I'm gonna come back over here, and I'm gonna paste that junk right here. Okay, we're good. Now, I can set a value. If this is a product I just sold, this is pretty easy. Uh, I could just turn this on and I could say, hey, it's $47. And whenever that goal is met, it's gonna record a sale of $47. Now, this last option here is important to understand. You have the option to set a funnel. If I turn this on, I get to set up the entire checkout process. Let me explain what this is about. Let's say you have a goal that when someone reaches a specific page on your site, that goal fires. Like in my example, this getting started page, here's the issue with this. Yes, this is the last step of my sign up process, but it's also a page that people come back to after the fact when you know, they wanna remember what steps they need to take. Now, what you don't want in that kind of a situation is that whenever someone comes back to that page, it says the goal was accomplished, or else Google Analytics will count 
each visit as a purchase and that's not what you want. So in that situation, you want to set up a funnel with specific steps. In other words, uh, you can say in order for that visit to count as a purchase, they have to visit that page after visiting another page which in my case would be, you know, a series of steps from the sales page to the checkout pages, and you can put all of that in there. So for example, here you can see my sales page. It's the first page, uh, and then there's the page where they enter some details and their page where they make the payment and all of that stuff. So what I want to do is make sure that that goal page only counts if they've gone through these steps. So to do that, I'm gonna come back over here to Google Analytics. I'm gonna turn the funnel on, and then I can put the steps. So for example, I can put the first step. I'm gonna call this the sales page. And then I can put the URL is slash club. I can also say that it is required. And in this case, yes, I want it to be required. Then I can say there's a sign up page. And with that sign up page, I can grab the URL here. I can copy that and I can paste that in here. And as you can see, you can put in all of the steps that you have in your funnel. So for now, these are all of the steps that I'm gonna include. Now I want to emphasize something. If you're setting up a simple goal, like someone signing up for your newsletter or for a free guide, you don't need to include a funnel. If when they visit the goal URL, it always means that the goal has been completed, you can skip this funnel stuff completely. All right. Let's finish this up. So I can come down here and click on verify this goal. Doing this, here's what it's gonna do. It's gonna check to see how many times that goal was met over the last seven days. It's just a way of you verifying that everything is set up correctly. Now, this is only gonna show something if you are setting up a goal that is tracking something that has already been happening. If that is the case, go ahead and click on verify this goal. And once you're done, you can click on save. And that is it. You can see here, your goal has been set up and anytime someone does the action you want them to do, it's gonna be tracked in Google Analytics. You're good to go. Now, as a reminder, if you're using an e-commerce platform like WooCommerce, Shopify, or any other one, there's a better way to set this up that's actually easier and it gives you way more detailed information. It's quite powerful and just plain awesome. In the next video of this series, I will show you exactly how to set that up so you can check out that video next. And if you're not using an e-commerce platform, you can skip directly to the video after that, which will show you how to set up your campaign URLs so that you can finally start tracking every link you place on social media in an easy way to tell you exactly how much each post is worth. I will link to that, of course, and all other videos in this series in the description below. And if you think this series is awesome, hit subscribe, tap that bell notification icon because you don't wanna miss what's coming up next to help you grow your online business. My name is Leslie Samuel, and I'll be waiting for you in the next video. Peace out.